second that we start the meeting in open session. Agreed. Agreed. Okay, I'd like to welcome everyone to today's public accounts meeting. A um, bit of housekeeping, just in terms of your mobile phones and your electronic devices, with the exception of your tablets, as they do interfere with the recording of the session. Members, I've received apologies from Adrian McQuillan. Are members aware of any other apologies? None. Okay, minutes, members. Agenda item two, minutes of the meeting of the 8th of October. Um, if they're agreed, I'll sign them into the record. Agreed. agreed. Thank you. Uh, agenda item three, we have correspondence from Andrew McCormick, Detty, regarding the NI Events Company, which is at pages three of your yellow packs. Uh, you'll also see a tabled letter from Andrew McCormick, Deddy, Accounting Officer, in response to the committee's question on the investigation into the events company. Uh, Mr McCormick explains that the investigation into the events company took a very long time to complete uh, because it was a very complex investigation. It also had to be put on hold for almost 18 months following the identification of matters which needed to be referred to the PSNA. In addition, the inspectors encountered significant difficulties in securing interviews with some of the individuals involved around the governance of the events company. So, members, the uh, correspondence is at page three of your yellow pack, and that's from Mr. Andrew McCormick. Uh, it is to note, but if you want to take a moment to, to read it, I'll allow members time to do so. Also, members, is tabled correspondence for Mr David McNary thanking the committee uh, for assisting him on the events company issues that he raised with us. Are we content to note Mr McNary's uh, yeah. correspondence? Yeah. Agreed. Members, are you content with the correspondence from Mr McCormick? Um, chairperson, I have to be very careful. I'm not going to question Mr McCormick, but certainly that's an extremely depressing letter in the sense that something has been going on now for how many years? Six, Six years? Uh, we end up with a, a convoluted explanation as to why public money could have been acted more quickly. And certainly I often refer to the wee boy who steals the Mars bar out of a supermarket and he's in court the next day. There were very serious concerns about how the uh, events company spent its money. There was quite a lot of information was provided. And six years later, we're told because it's complex, it's sophisticated, it's, uh, we have to follow particular protocols that the Public Accounts Committee is no wiser now than we were six years ago in terms of what the event company did with an astronomical sum of public money, which I know went on the project never materialised. I know there were cheques written all over the place. And uh, at the end of the day, the Public Accounts Committee here can find out what happened. And, uh, you know, we'd certainly... I don't want to create the impression that there's one law for those in positions of influence and power where they can write cheques all over the place, give them to favoured ones, uh, put money into projects that never had any chance of success, while other people have a different law. And I'm sure if you were going around Northern Ireland today, there's people up for shoplifting for petty larceny and all sorts of things. And we get nowhere. And that's not right. I concur with that. Ross? I think, Chair, to agree with John, what we have here is technical gobbledygook. And that's all it is. Uh, the paperwork concerns should be presented to us. If, if there is evidence, let us see it. What we've got here is, you could say, a cover up because there, there are cracks being covered up here. <coughs> this went on for six years. 
and various bits and pieces have happened. The police have been involved, various accountants have been involved. If there's difficulties explaining the report to us, we'll bring an accountant along to explain it to us. But this, uh, this answer isn't acceptable, and it is basically trying to brush us off. I agree entirely with John. Thank you. Ross uh, Roy. <coughs> Some of my in that the police were carrying out an investigation and that there have been problems affecting due process. But thereafter, you see 15 months to gain interviews. I mean, are, are, are these interviews with either public servants or people with um, substantial pensions from the public service? Yes. I'm, I'm really curious how on earth it could have taken 15 months to something, you know, that we need some sort of. That's I don't, I don't know when that needs dug into and when it's appropriate to it, but at some point it is. Secondly, it, it took nine months to clear the report. Yep. Um, now clearly, you know, I, I view that as been stalling going on in some position. It's either it's a fraction report. It's either right or it's not right. Provide the evidence to justify if something was inaccurate. That shouldn't have taken nine months. And that's you add those two together. And that's two years in the process. Uh, um, uh, justice delayed is, is uh, not, not uh, appropriate, um, and the public will not see it as being reasonable. Mm, absolutely, and I think also um, when we when we're talking about the the in, the investigation and, and the the reason why we're we we done the in, or why the department had to do the investigation because um, public money being involved and. And when you look about, you know, this was a complex investigation undertaken by a team of specialist forensic accountants. Well, there's more public money going out on this investigation, you know, and, and uh, you know, time consuming because they had to rely on the cooperation of interviewees. Now, I understand that why, you know, but I mean, did it take almost, you know, eight years to, to get to the conclusion where we are today? We still no, you know, Conclusion really on, on, no. on what happened, none whatsoever. Uh, members, how would you like to respond to this letter in terms of what Mr. McCormick has? Are, are we actually going to get the final draft report to see? Because you know, when he, they have received it in July 2013, yeah. however, given the nature of the findings contained in the report, it's necessary to carry out a consultation process with some of those named. Yeah. If the police carried out an investigation, some of these people may have been interviewed under caution. Uh, but clearly there is a report. I think we should ask to see it. He has it. Let us see it. I think, Chairperson, I'm sure you would agree totally with me. It would be absolutely amazing if we didn't see the report. Mm -hmm. And I think the only issue is if they've had it since March, why are they sitting on it uh, to now? What is there to hide? But I think, you know, Mr McCormick, as a permanent secretary, needs to offer some comfort to the PSD that this nonsense is just the lessons have been learned from it and we need to know how he intends in future to track the money of uh, semi-state bodies or arms length bodies in the future but that doesn't absolve anybody from the need to uh, uh, establish where hundreds of thousands, perhaps much more, of public money went missing. Uh, I, I think you know we would be failing in our duty if we accepted that letter I think so. as, as, as a piece of decent correspondence that we can just note. Mm. Absolutely. The, the, the weaknesses uh, outlined in that are horrendous, and uh, I'm sure you know, and I know you would agree with me. All members agree with. Me, at the present time, where people are so yeah. Worried about where government funding is coming from. Now, this confetti job here went on for years. Even the dogs in the street knew what was going on, uh, and uh, not, nothing, nothing happened. And six years later, we still can't yeah. see the report. I find it, uh, I suppose, distressing to read the last paragraph. You know, given the fact that there was a final draft report within in the department in 2013, and they're saying, given the nature of the findings contained, it was necessary to carry out a further consultation process with those named in the report. So, did the department not actually, you know, what 
Where was the gap there? Well, the the to a question I, I there. I don't own. think the problem there. I mean, I, you can understand in terms of people being named. I support what John yeah. said. So you can understand maybe they're taking caution to people being named. But they've got the final draft. Yes. They've all that work done since March. So mm -hmm. let's see the report. Exactly. You know, there. Uh, you can sort of understand them covering their, their base in terms of individuals being named. But they've done that. They've informed them. So get us the report. Let's get looking at it and let's see what was wrong. And Roy? But just but for my try and obviously yeah. new to the committee, but just for my clarification, this is Deddy examining uh, a body within Deddy. You know, I'm just curious why is it to degree investigating itself? Is that that's what it appears to be? Is that what's happening? No. 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 It was the arms leg body that they were investigating. Which it was responsible for. Yeah. yeah. We're still on the yeah. Had they not a remit to carry the, this investigation? They did. They did. They did. They did. Right. They did. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, well, members, if uh, if there's an agreement, uh, Lucia can um, maybe do up some draft up something to go back to Mr. McCormick, maybe uh, in terms of the concerns that we have raised today. I don't know. Is it? I think it's more than concerns. I think there's. You know, we are concerned. Yes, but. But there seems to be an element of trying to cover something up here as well. That's that's a bit I'm, uh, and I come back on what John just has alluded to, the fact that over a year ago they had decided to go back and just make sure they'd got everything right after bringing in forensic accountants to investigate something. They're wanting just to go back and consult with people again, just to make sure. Let's let's hope and pray we've got this story right or cover each other on this story. I'm not so sure that the independence of the whole thing, and that's, that's to come back on the point, that the independence of the whole thing is, is, is there in relation to the investigation that was carried out. The problem is if you actually say that, the danger with that is, Paul, if we actually... You're making uh, through the chair, yeah. If we're, we're making that accusation, then what will actually happen is this will push the report further away. I, I think we have to accept yeah. now that they've Publish done the work. Publish the report now, and then let us yeah, scrutinise the report. Deliberate. Because yeah. if we actually say that we believe there's something wrong, they may have to get another review yeah. another and actually up. keep that away from us for longer. So yeah. let's get it, and then if we want to say that after it, that's fine. I, no, I'm OK on that. I'm happy enough. Okay. Okay. But I'm, I, I don't know. What, I'm very, very annoyed about the way that they're, they're attempting to have delayed in relation to bringing something forward. And, you know, I, I can't see how a forensic accountant could not identify all of the detail mm -hmm. of the monies that were given to them to actually run that company and deliver events or not deliver events uh, cannot be an audit trail of the whole thing down to every penny. Yeah. I think there might be certain aspects of the report that still may be with the PSNI. I'm not sure, but I think that may be the case. We can get that checked out. Sean? I'd agree with Trevor because, you know, this particular letter, we just can't acknowledge this letter. As, uh, this this letter creates there's more questions, but yeah. and th this needs to be followed up. But I think we some sort of reply has to go back to them that we're we're very much uh, we're not Amazing. satisfied with this, mm. but we need to see the report, take the whole lot in context. Yeah, then you know, the, uh, you know, for example, Ross rely on the cooperation of interviewees. Yeah. So is that why it took fifteen or sixteen months to the? Mm. I'm just not yeah. going to cooperate. I think we'd be more disturbed than concerned. I mean, you look at it, the police were there, the police have, have left again and handed it back. Uh, and the main reason to be disturbed is the fact that the report was completed. And then, just to be sure, we'll come back and we'll talk to the people concerned again to make sure that they're... Uh, they're the stories. Uh, yeah, it, it doesn't make sense. The, this, if this was a, a public company, you wouldn't get away with it like this. Uh, and if there was any financial irregularity where the police were involved, they wouldn't be going back on it like this. She'd be sitting actually in front of a judge at this stage. I think that we, we have to make Mr McCormick well aware that we are deeply disturbed by, by his letter. Yeah. We want the report, and we may want him here as well in the not too distant future to explain the report. Okay. Final word, Roy, you wanted yeah, to yeah, know? There's this delay of finalising the order report. I am conscious that other office reports, they would send it to everybody that's taken part and been interviewed, and this is what we're publishing. You have a chance to put things right. So I'm, I'm not, but it's uh, too fussed about doing that. But it's the nine months that it took to get yeah. it finalised. But what actually gives me most concern is it was finalised in March. What's happened since then? Mm -hmm. What's that? What's happened about it? And then he goes on to talk about it's taken so long. 
What is the net result of this report? I am not aware of any outputs. There is a report sitting on a shelf somewhere, and there should be outputs for people's efforts to make sure it doesn't happen again. I think, Chairperson, for maybe those of us who are involved, this was not a case of something that came to light after several years. From the very beginning, there were members of the Public Accounts Committee alerted the Audit Office and the Department that there were serious irregularities going on in the events company. Some of it uh, was certainly in the public domain. Uh, some of it was common knowledge among the public at large that there were checks been written uh, to people uh, and the projects had not in any way been properly researched, no business cases, no anything. And I would have thought that from a very early stage, bank accounts should have been seized. There should have been uh, an investigation. We know now, eight years on, a lot of those records don't exist any longer. People have moved on. They're not in those positions anymore. And the cost of the forensic accountants and experts and all that has just been added money wasted mm. based on what Mr McCormick has given us. Now, you know, the, the civil service is very keen to restrict the public accounts Committee on what they do. If they think that that's the standards that we live by, then they should uh, have another think, because that represents nothing but a total failure on the department uh, to act when they were given good information that there were things amiss in the events company. Is it any wonder it was closed down? I agree to draft a reply back to Mr McCormick and I suppose setting out, um, and, you know, do you know how maybe to send him a hands out, a copy of this meeting today where we discussed this, and also ask him where is this report since March 2014, whose shelf is it sitting on and what's the reasons why it hasn't been published? And we cost? want we want a published copy ASAP basically. Cost, yeah. Yeah. Cost. And costs. As agreed members? Yes, agreed. Okay. Okay. okay, members, moving on. Matters arising. We have correspondence from Mr from Mr James McEwen uh, in relation to the Presbyterian Mutual Society. And I refer to the tabled um, correspondence which has been received from Mr McEwen regarding the Presbyterian Mutual Society uh, members. And it's the tabled correspondence. Um, is this the same as what we had before? Or is it, uh... No, this is different. Yeah, this is different. Members, you'll receive, see from the correspondence that Mr McEwen begins by thanking the committee for considering the points uh, that he raised with us in his previous letter of the 24th of September. Uh, and we discussed that in our last meeting of the 8th of October. Mr McEwen uh, goes on to raise a specific concern about the treatment of the £50 million in financial assistance provided by Derry within Derry's resource accounts. Mr McEwen extends that as there is no obligation for £50 million in financial assistance to be repaid, it should be treated differently from the £175 million in loans uh, Derry's accounts. Uh, members, um, as you can see from the correspondence, he's, he has raised this matter with us, so uh, I think it's only right that we, the auditor has more information to bring uh, to us, maybe just if we write to the auditor and get clarification around Mr McGowan's concern. And, uh, and then we can pass it on to Mr McGowan. Our members agreed that we do that, um, maybe raise this concern of Mr McGowan's with the auditor and get clarity from the auditor in relation to the £50 million. Again, register my end. This is okay. my call. Thank I'm you, Roy. Roy. I'm going to do the same again then. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, I don't know. Yeah. Did you, uh, Roy and Trevor, declare present? Present. Okay, members, that's agreed. Um, Moving on, uh, members, agenda item five in relation to our forward work programme, which is consideration of it, uh, which is at page 12 of our electronic packs. Members, if you just want to take a moment to consider our forward work programme. 
There are some amendments to the programme for November and December uh, to include the nineteenth uh, of November. Is it the the? It's just the National Fraud Initiative strategy. We're just going to get a briefing from the auditor in relation to that. That's the only thing that's included. Okay, members, are we content to note the forward work programme? Or have any yeah, questions? No, Chairperson, I might have asked about this before. I can't remember. The financial accountability of cross-border bodies comes up in the Assembly weekend. I can't for the life of me recall when we have been involved in any kind of hearing involving uh, a cross-border body in conjunction with the Public Accounts Committee in Dublin. In fact, I don't remember the last time we met them. Uh, is that something that's in the planning? or? Yeah, I think the Bytel, we discussed this earlier in the year, the Bytel um, inquiry report will, will give us, I think, that opportunity to do a, a joint piece of work. Is it, am I right, Lucian? There's the possibility of it, but um, discussions need to take place, I think, between the two CNAGs on, on that respect and how they're reporting on the different aspects of Bytel, mm -hmm. well, which may then have an avenue for the for it might be useful if it was indicated to the two C and AGs. Yeah. But there's a public account that here in Stormont has the numbers on the, on the cross border bodies in terms of their finance. And that can be negative, it can be positive, or it can be totally neutral. Uh, but I do think yeah. a piece of work yeah. that needs <clears throat> to be done. Yeah. I think also we need to begin again meeting on a regular basis our counterparts. In Edinburgh, Wales, and in Dublin, because public accounts is above party politics. We learn and we share from each other on how to improve our own work. Because we're not perfect, we need to constantly be looking practice. to others yep. for exemplary material on how we can improve. Okay. And that did happen in the past, but it hasn't happened now for several years. Mm -hmm. And I'm disappointed it's not in this forward programme. Okay, uh, Roy. Um, I understand the North South bodies um, are accountable to both the jurisdictions because both yes. finances go into it. Uh, and my memory goes back to a previous, a long time ago. Um, really the North Centre Trade Body, uh, there was a meeting yep. in Uri. Mm -hmm. So we, we clearly are um, entitled to um, uh, follow up any use of public funding that has originated from the uh, Northern Ireland Executive's budget. Um, I'm conscious there may be different accountancy arrangements on both sides of the border, and, and that may be a complication. So we'll, um, the gist of it is, if there are issues that need to be yeah. investigated, I have no yeah. doubt, and the clerk confirmed, we can investigate yeah. if, if there is use of public funding. Chairman, I, I'll, I'll be above board. I am fed up hearing all the criticism of bodies that we have never had the opportunity to look into their financial mm. accounting. I think it's only fair and reasonable if they're looked into, then we can either substantiate the claims that they're inefficient and so on, or we can say they're okay. So it's in their interest. Absolutely. Everybody's interest. I mean, uh, uh, most of our departments here, if not all, do pay service level agreements on both jurisdictions. Yes. Uh, you know, DRD roads, health, education. You know, so, th so they are joint up initiatives that public money. Is used. So I think, yes, you're right, absolutely. It's only right that we, we learn from our counterparts in all jurisdictions. Um, yep. Yoshi, you were saying you did have a conversation with CNAG quite this recently morning. this morning about a piece of work that can be done. Um, do you want to? Well, it was just really about Bytel and whether there, were, whether there was an opportunity to do something. So I, I'm sort of exploring that. Um, but it couldn't have been factored in before Christmas because. Yeah. Bytel, the committee agreed to do after Christmas, so right, it's not off the radar. Before Christmas. Yeah. Absolutely. The, the, and, and I suppose the forward work programme does take us up to Christmas. Possibly, Just, yes. It's but something that we could factor in uh, for the new year. That's I think good. make it a priority for the new year. I think it's just to assure you that yeah. it was really to do with the way the inquiries, the order of them, that that you know we're, we've got our 
the inquiry sorted out up to Christmas, so any opportunity for doing that would be after Christmas. Right. Well, and point. it is in the strategic plan, so it's, it is being looked at. Yeah. We come back on a point that, that John has alluded to, and I think it is, it is important because everyone does hear the term the unaccountable cross-border yeah. bodies. Mm -hmm. And if that is the case, we want to make sure that if we're putting money into those uh, those right. unaccountable north-south bodies, that we know exactly what it's been spent on and where yeah. it's coming from. And I think we have the right to do an investigation. And uh, I, I know our own CNAG have the right yeah. to look into that from this yeah. side. One, one caveat, I wouldn't want to do an investigation for the sake of doing an investigation. Yes, no, it has to be an issue that we need yeah. to get our hands on. Well, the Bytel yeah. one, yeah. Bytel one yeah. I think, yeah. is a good example. Okay, members. So As everyone says they're not accountable. Yeah. They are. I think the CNIG was to bring us an update sometime soon. Exactly. Anyway, on the Bytel stuff, so uh, maybe we can mention it today when he's here at okay. theatre today. There, there is discussion scheduled in um, well, that's about, for the committee to look at the Fort Worth programme in November. Mm. Mm. Um, right, but if you want to talk to him for that, um, you know, I'm sure yeah, we can get an update on the Bytel um, inquiry. From the auditor, maybe at any time. That's yeah. grand. Okay. Okay, members agreed on that. Members, um, for the remaining items of business today, we have to go into closed session. Can I get an agreement on that? Agreed. 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 Closed session. No. I know, Trevor, you don't want to have it in public. I thought we were on it, but I just. No. First part of the open. Okay, members, we're in closed session. Um,